Cool. Hey, everybody. We uh, are here to celebrate a 200th, 205th newsletter. We've been doing this for four years. So uh, yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty real. Like if we had met the first day of freshman year, remember that in college, like meeting people on that first day and you're like, do you ever see them again? <laughs> but we, we saw each other again. We saw each other every freaking week. And now we're here getting, uh, getting, we've, I think we're wrapping up like year four, right? Is that, is that really what it is? Let me look. So we've got the archive. Um, let me just share my screen here. Yeah, so like if we go back, scroll, 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 scroll. We're talking about like 2018, 19, 20, 21, 22, 20. Holy, what? We're coming up on like five years. <laughs> this whole like graduate thing. Okay, 29, so 2019, we're coming up on July. Anyway, we've done, this is like 200 and, we had 205 here in April. So now we're at like five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. This is 223. And I wanted to take the opportunity to welcome Sarah and Mark, who are behind the scenes every week for all 226 newsletters, as well as John, Grant, and Ross, uh, as well as a hello to Nisha, who is going to be here, but is in, uh, is in a funny time zone at the moment. Um, well, rather a different, a different time zone uh, where meeting isn't super convenient. So we're all here to talk about voices and new voices in carbon removal. Like, you know, what's important about getting us together today to me is, um, you know, I see all of you as, as kind of communicators in carbon removal, people who communicate to, to many, many people at once. Um, and yeah, there's something that keeps coming up with, with, with um, newsletter 100 when we all got together. It was like, okay, like what can we do to inspire more voices, inspire more people to share their like authentic journey through carbon removal that's, that's not perfected and 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 everything but it is it is real it can be perfected if that's real um and some people started newsletters some people started more sharing and i i'd still love to see more of that like i'd love to see more consistent weekly voices in carbon removal um and so i thought getting you all together and sharing and pulling back the curtain on on this 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 communication that we do called it's go time um, Grant has queued up some kind of guiding questions and John and Ross are welcome to, to jump in and offer input and comments and even on your own process. Um, but Mark, Sarah, and I are, are here to sh share that in, in service of inspiring others. Um, and maybe I said inspiring last time at newsletter 100 and, um, almost, I want to, I want to level that up a bit. Like, I'll, I'm, I commit to five people in air miners starting personal monthly or more frequent newsletters by the end of 2023. Boom. So it shall be. All right. And so with that, um let's uh let's dive in grant you want to you want to kick things off you got some, some questions yeah for sure well yeah well thanks for having me back on too um but yeah no i wrote some questions of just thinking about the whole you know idea of, of newsletter and, and writing things that are interesting and relevant for people to to read about and engage with one thing i'm curious about do you ever struggle with idea generation like figuring out like what am i going to say this week like people expect to get something you know fresh insightful concise and they're in their inbox, what, what, what am I going to say? You know, like, is that ever even a struggle or in the carbon removal world? Is that, is that just not a concern? Is there just always something to, to talk about? Darren, Mark, thoughts? Lots of thoughts. Um, Which that, that, that five seconds is a classic answer 
I like, I don't ever come up with ideas. <laughs> like, I'm like, Mark and Sarah, what do I say? <laughs> okay, go, Mark. Sorry. Yeah. Do well, we I mean, struggle? Yeah. Never. Never. <laughs> Easy peasy every Friday. Um, well, I think, Grant, you, you mentioned, you know, is it because it's carbon removal? There's lots of things to talk about. Yeah, there are lots of things to talk about, but are they the right things? Are they the things that the community members, the subscribers of Tito's newsletter, are those topics the topics that those folks want to learn? Are those topics the things that might be on their minds? And so it might be worth, uh, Tito, if you, if you think this is maybe appropriate to maybe walk through the process really quick that will um, kind of share those who are listening and watching um, ways that we can find something that week. Um, so at the start of it, we asked Tito how the previous newsletter went. He goes over the statistics and things like that. Um, and then we just asked a simple question, what happened this week? And then from there, he kind of gives us a rundown, kind of a day by day rundown. And fingers crossed, something, we hope that something comes up that's exciting to talk about um, come that day, Friday. And sometimes there is, sometimes there's something that happened earlier in the week, we dive in, we unpack it, it's awesome, and it's easy. And other times it's like, okay, well, that was cool. And it's like, okay, now we've got to put a little bit of extra work in terms of trying to figure out what it is that we want to talk about. And I think it's, I think the magic is that me and Sarah are coming in at it from an outsider's perspective. We're not, um, we're not, in the air miners community as deep as the rest of uh, the uh, subscribers are. So we're coming at it with fresh eyeballs. And with that, that allows us to help Tito unpack something that he might overlook or he might think that that might not be interesting. And then we might want to think about connecting it with previous newsletters. We might want to think about what's happening, what's going to happen next week. And so we have some tips and tricks on how to kind of get something from Tito uh, but yeah, as I mentioned, sometimes it's super easy and we dive deep and it, and we're we're done on time, uh, which is 45 after. Other times it takes up until 40 minutes to actually get something. And then it's like, okay, how do we like speed this up? How do we get something out in the next five minutes? Sometimes we stay until three o'clock. So um, I think it's just based, uh, it's a case by case scenario. Um, it changes, but uh, I feel like our structure is pretty solid. Yeah, I think another thing I'll add to that, I mean, all of that is true. And um, the question, what should we discuss in the newsletter this week is not one that we bring up. Um, I think if you start asking, what should I talk about? You get yourself kind of stuck. And so some of the things that we ask Tito is like, what's on your mind? What are you hearing? Um, I love when Tito gets on a rant, like what's bugging you about carbon removal, the industry, what are people talking about that's driving you nuts? Um, and the you know thing Mark said about us being outsiders is we'll listen to one of those rants or one of those things. And that's all coming from Tito's point of view being you know wrapped up in the industry and these conversations all week long. And being on the outside kind of listening to that, we can start to piece together how to actually communicate that to somebody who's not in the thick of it. Um, and those tend to be really interesting. So a lot of what we ask is, what is it that people need to hear right now? What is it that people aren't talking about but should be? Um, what is it that, you know, is really bugging us or is really important or needs to be said, you know, stuff like that. Can I ask one? How do you deal with burnout? You've done 200. That's a lot. Burnout. We've done some on burnout, right? Like, let me load up this, this screen share. We've, we've done some on burnout. Um, burnout is real. I, Mark and Sarah, do you have any comment? Like, how, how do you, how do we deal with burnout? Part of it is um, Tito has this amazing attitude and he comes refreshed and excited and enthusiastic every, almost every week. Um, so he's just a breath of fresh air. And so there's not really, but sometimes I will say sometimes, almost 
sometimes Tito will come and say, I'm exhausted today. I'm not feeling it. And we will say, let's take the week off. Simple as that, because burnout is real. Yeah, and there's been a few moments where we unpack that feeling and talk about, well, if you're feeling this way, how many members in the Arab Miners community are also feeling this way? And we start to kind of unpack it to where it's like, well, what can the community do? What can Arab Miners do as an organization to support people like Tito? Because just because, you know, he's co-founder and kind of the 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 face of, of air miners doesn't mean that he's not also experiencing certain things that the members are experiencing. And so we use as an opportunity to talk about an important topic that might not be discussed in the community. It's all about gigatons this and you know GHG that and all the, the technical side of things, right? But I do feel like at times we do bring in the squishy stuff, the the human side of, of things and burnout is as we all are aware of, it's a it's a real thing, and um, and yeah, just to echo Sarah, you know, I think Tito's perspective excites uh, myself and Sarah. That gets us excited, and then it might bring Tito's maybe not so excited attitude that particular Friday back up to where we are, and then he gets his second wind literally on the call, and and we we always end with something. But um, I don't think we've ever ended a call with no newsletter. We've never I'm ended mistaken. a call with no newsletter and we've never uh, not sent the newsletter that we wrote. Right, right. I would, I would build on what you're saying, Mark. Like to me, I think we, we always start with human connection because, and then, and then whether we share that with the newsletter is, is another thing, but like, I'll, it is, it's what's on your mind. And like, I'm talking to Mark and Sarah, like we're all, we're all just, we're talking together. And then we kind of get this feeling of like, hey, here's something that's worth, sharing with others but they're like starting with what should we share kind of gets us gets stuck and well to burn out like burnout is real is like you know i'm feeling burned out and i'm hearing from other people that they're burned out um and like can we can we talk about that together and then we talk about it together and then we're like hey actually you know that would be a good thing to talk about in the newsletter um yeah so that's how we that's how what is the what is the um what does the newsletter say in terms of you know, set boundaries, make rituals and habits, hand things off and talk to others. Um, so yeah, setting boundaries, two to 2.45 every Friday. That's that's our boundaries. Rituals and habits, well, we do it every week um, unless we don't want to, uh, unless I don't want to. Um, hand things off. Uh, at times we've like, well, I haven't done videos in like six months. Uh, maybe, maybe more at this, at this point. But like handing things off in the sense of like, well, just, you know, cutting, cutting things back or something. But anyway, that's, um, that's burnout. So maybe related to that point of burnout, is there ever a feeling you have or a voice that comes up after you put together a newsletter, after you talk about something, come up with a topic that's like, yeah, I, like maybe we shouldn't do this or maybe this is yeah. just noise. Um, uh -huh. there's a, there's a lot of noise out there. I mean, there's a lot of news, a lot of posts, a lot of things that maybe are distracting us from our goal to move a gigaton by 2030. Um, is there ever a worry that you're contributing to that? Or is it just like, no, you just got to override that, just put it out there. And then hopefully it's contributing. I think there's a lot of, there's certainly concerns. Um, that, Martin and Sarah, do you have anything you want to throw in there? I just think that's a really great question, Brant, and really insightful. I think a lot of people get stuck on, I have to send out a newsletter every week. I have committed to this and I have to do it whether I have something to say or not. And just, you know, kind of don't look beyond that. And you're asking the question that I think we ask a lot, why is this valuable to somebody? Why does this add value? Why does this move your miners goal forward? And I think it is, as long as you're centering on that and not on the metric of how many newsletters I'm sending out per month or whatever it is, um, you'll avoid adding to the noise. I think we're, we're, we're center, centering our process around avoiding adding to the noise by asking, you know, who is it that's reading this? Why is it valuable to them? Why is it important to them? What are they going to get out of this? Will this help them remove carbon? You know, ultimately the ultimate goal, all of that stuff is front and center. Yeah, and to add to that too, if you notice, we don't really 
share any news or anything else that's that we know is being talked about in other communities that are in the same space um, for a reason, because that would be adding to the noise, right? And so again, I feel like it's more on the human side of things, either coming from a, a, a co-founder like Tito, coming from someone who is like in the weeds, but isn't just turning around and regurgitating things that other um, other sources might be sharing as well. It's coming from a more authentic place. So I think that's another way that it, for me, I don't look at it as adding, I don't look at it as part of the noise. I look at it as separate from the noise out there. Yeah, I, I probably would say I don't, I don't have that as a concern of like adding to the noise. I have the concern of like looking like a fucking idiot. <laughs> like that's, that's the concern that like sometimes comes up, but let's just say like that, that comes up on these, on these things. Um, I mean, and I guess there, but there probably is some concern sometimes where it's like exactly what Sarah and Mark are both saying, right? Like we've done a lot of emails that end up with like, some of them are like, Hey, come to this. Here's this thing happening at Airminers that you could just sign up for. But like, it doesn't, that's not what the subject line is. That's not what the message is about. Um, really starting from that, like what's on your mind, just, you know, it might be like, Hey, we're playing for the town hall. And I'm like, how the hell do you coordinate across two, 2,200 people? And like, that's the thing that I'm thinking about. And maybe we'd write a newsletter that's about like, shit, I'm thinking a lot about coordination and, and humans and things like that. And just like share about that. And then also, Hey, here's this town hall. That's what, that's, you know, kind of a, a more distinct call to action kind of thing. Um, the call to action is, oh, that's a big redeeming quality of like, I think adding to noise is like, or not, or like re regarding noise is like, here's a, here's a thing to do, do this thing. Like there's, there's no noise in that. Like when I think about noise, a lot of noise is like, I don't know. It's just, just stuff people are talking about. And there's not really a call to action. There's like a lot of words and motions maybe, but not really like a, here's this thing that needs to happen. So here's, you can click and do this thing. Um, but definitely do, I mean, that's, that's like Sarah's classic question is like, what is useful about this to somebody who's reading this? Cause, cause like, you know, I want to tell people about the latest thing at air miners is not, that's not good enough. Like that's just got a million emails from people that are trying to tell you about the thing they're doing. And it's just like super boring. And it really is like noise is like, what's the thing that, that would actually be helpful for people, including a, a call to action. That's kind of a okay answer. Yeah. Yeah, I think it makes total sense. Yeah. Um, both starting with why thing, if like centering on the purpose of it, it's like, well, if you do that and you do it honestly, it probably can't go wrong. Um, or at least it's contributing. Uh, sort of follow up is, you know, in terms of noise and feeling that, Sarah, I, th I think you were saying this, like um, feeling like you have to publish it. I'm curious what everyone thinks about potentially like, so someone who's thinking about starting a newsletter, but maybe they don't want to make this commitment to do it for, you know, 200 newsletters or, or five years or anything. Um, what do you think about like sunsetting it or, or sort of creating a plan to wind a newsletter down, maybe even before you get started or planning like a limited run or limited series? Um, if somebody's thinking about a newsletter, but they, you know, where is that a decent way to maybe encourage people to get into it? Or is it kind of just, uh, that would kind of waste a lot of effort because then they'd put all this effort into trying to get subscribers just to stop what they're doing. So I'm curious how everybody's thinking about that. Yeah, we do six month reviews uh, to review like, what is like, why the fuck are we doing this? What is the thing that we're wanting to achieve? When we first started it, uh, you can go like, this is in the interview that John did. Um, but like going back to the roots of this, like, it was just like, I wanted to, sh uh, I, I wanted to connect with more people in air miners. I was kind of lonely. I was like, yeah, like, I want to like send stuff out and have people write me back and kind of chat about it. Um, but be, like getting down to like, why are you doing this is really important. And that's, that goes back to like the whole, you know, it's go time. It's like, okay, like it's go time. We have this 45 minute section every week. What is it that we want to use this for? What is it that we can use this for? Um, I think the mini yeah. approach is 
is good if you can use it. I don't use it typically myself too much, but to my own peril, really, because there are definitely times where fewer shows or fewer pieces of content that were super high quality versus like uh, two of these are great and one of these is just okay. It just brings the average down so much. And it really only takes one mediocre show where someone would be like, do I need to catch all of these? And then before you know it, they're somewhere else. So I've never fully mm -hmm. taken this advice. I think it's true. But I think people also, if they like you, they probably like your voice specifically, Tito. So they're unlike, like you are sticky. And I read your newsletter because it's you and I know you and I like you. I imagine people who listen to the show like what I have to say unique to me. And it's uh, so that kind of stickiness, like like they're the podcasters I like or the writers I like, I could literally like read or listen to them talk about paint drawing and it's fine. They will find a way to capture my interest. Um, so yeah, no, re retweet to that. I think Tito, your biggest strength and in the newsletters and a lot of what you do is, is your unique voice and enthusiasm and just like the, the Tito magic that you bring to it. And people are here for the Tito ride. I think that's true. Which is why the podcast we just did is really good, Tito, because you, you, it was like Tito was turned up to 11 on it. And I was like, that's the Tito that I, the world wants <laughs> and craves. Hey, that's a, that's a plug for the podcast. See, that's the funny thing about like, you know, like it's sort of like you, you just, you just go there, you go with what's on your mind and you end up like connecting to the things that you like, you know, want to tap into or whatever. Um, that unique voice, that's the thing. Like when I, when I think about mini series or doing a series, I think the risk is it starts to be like kind of what, what should be said about this. Um, and we've grappled with, like we, we haven't done series or at all. <laughs> like every week is a different thing. And it's, I wouldn't say it's necessarily by design, but it's by like, what's on your mind. And if what's on my mind two weeks in a row was the same thing, then totally fair game. But just letting that be the compass, um, the, everyone listening to this has a unique voice. And, and, and committing that you have a unique voice and each week, each week there's all sorts of shit going on in carbon removal. There were, there were four years ago and there certainly is today. And you having some perspective on it, is, it's there. You do have some perspective on it. And some pieces maybe are more interesting or hotter or whatever, but like, what's on your mind is genuinely just like, it really cuts through all the other stuff. Like what's actually on your mind. Yeah, I think that's it exactly. And the Tito-ness turned up to 11, I love that. Um, I think for us specifically with this newsletter project and maybe a lot of newsletter projects, maybe a lot of podcasts, people sign up for it you know, like you were saying, Ross, for that person's perspective or that person's voice, they're in it for the ride, they're in it for the Tito ride. And so that's the way that we approach this work with Tito is um, we've never thought about it. You know, this is really to the last question a little bit, but like, it's never, what do people need to hear about this week? You know, what is it that we want to share with the world this week? It's what's in Tito's world, what's going on in Tito's experience this week. And it's always been about um, get a behind the scenes look into Tito's life as an air miner entrepreneur. You know, it's it's never been about like, let's educate the world about carbon removal because that would be like a very closed series that, you know, might have a certain number of episodes and it wouldn't really be from your perspective that much. Um, and so I think that's just the nature of what we're doing. So I would argue that it is by design. Um, it's in the very premise of what we're doing. It's like whatever Tito is up to, we can make something interesting about that that week. And it doesn't have to be on whatever topic last week's was or anything like that. It doesn't have to be related. Yeah. Yeah. I remember uh, a friend of mine when I was pursuing the newsletter remarked like, well, I want to be more like intentional with my newsletters. I don't want to just like send messages at this sort of by the beat of this weekly drum. And I was like, oh, wow, that sounds so smart. <laughs> but then like four years later, it's like, I mean, few things are more consistent than the clicking of the clock, right? It's just like, okay, next week, next week, next week, or rather this week, this week, this week. Um, and I think if we had started out doing like topics, probably would have stopped a long time ago. Um, 
the topic is carbon removal and how to you know how to remove carbon from the sky. Um, and that that, yeah. that is when I, when I talk about like committing to to five. Well, when I say I commit to five voices in carbon removal, what I mean is is that voice, that unique voice, that like not averaging anything. Averages are scary to me. They really they're like a they're like a very information loss kind of thing like you lose all the information you get an average and so like individuals are what make up air miners and we put wrappers around people called companies or called entities or things but entities aren't real human humans are real entities are at, at the, the, the the realest an entity can be is like a piece of paper in delaware somewhere right like entities don't actually exist individuals do exist and just if you build up from an individual voice and another individual voice and another individual voice that's powerful it's more powerful because it's more relatable and i think the other thing that i wanted to say is about the design of the thing um i think what you're talking about grant with you know i want to put out a series or tito with somebody who wants to be more intentional is people have this idea that oh i'm gonna um put out a newsletter or I'm going to put out a podcast I'm going to step up onto this soapbox and present my most polished self to the world and from the very beginning the design of what we're doing here is raw fast um, intentionally on purpose like we never chose to put a graphic header in the email you know like it's supposed to look like a personal email that Tito just wrote off the cuff and sent to you personally and that is on purpose that is by design and I think that that just makes it more relatable. It makes it feel more authentic. And um, it's, you know, like Tito was saying with consistency, it's easier to keep up with. It's easier to keep doing. It's, it's easier for everybody. You know, yeah, you could do a 12 episode series of very polished things and spend probably a year and a half putting it together and put it out there, but then what? Um, and this is an industry that's moving fast, right? <laughs> We just need to get stuff out there and hopefully, you know, get really clear on the goals of the thing. Um, if the goal is to get more people into the industry, then just keep that front and center and, and do what needs to be done to, to meet that goal. The way that you've designed pre-production makes sense too. It's the way I do podcasting as well. Because if you do a series that has segments or any sort of producing, the tendency to frame to death is like so high you will be like this this could be a little bit better i should re-record this and before you know it it's like six months later and it's never got published and it just died on the vine so i love that like the show must go on is going out at three at the latest 245 if we can that's the way to do it and like the main asset you have is everyone has a podcast or a newsletter and so they're there for you so just like leaning into that voice one of the early pieces of, of advice i got in la was like there's not really that many stories and so anything that you write should be so unique to your voice that it doesn't matter if everyone has the same log line as you. It's mm. so perfectly you and how you like That's execute cool. on it. That's all that matters is your execution because there's only like five stories anyways. So just like tell the most you version of it as possible. And no one can steal that because it's you. Um, so I say just like bet everything on the voice is what I would say. Hmm. I love it. We are at 245. Do you all want to keep going or should we wrap up here? Save her a few more, but then I have to run. Generally, some non. Can we do some celebration? I don't know what a good celebration looks like for this video, but we um... could stand in our chairs 222 times. Oh, good. <laughs> I mean, it's just if you look, it's like, wow. When we started this, would you have thought we'd be doing it for for this long? I mean, this is just amazing that the, the connections, the the inspiration that I get out of this, that others get out of it, the, the emails, one spin down. Um, yeah, what do you have in mind for celebration? John, how do you celebrate? How do you want to celebrate? Mm. You could write well, a song? Yeah, we can do, we can pull out Grant's Air Miner's song. I was supposed to write one at one point. Um, yeah. But so we could do that. Um, I don't know. I'm also wondering, like, what does the next hundred newsletters look like? Well, we have a six month strategy session coming up soon, right, Tito? Yeah. So, as as Tito we mentioned, do. every six months we do a check in, we review the last six months, we ask ourselves, do we want to keep doing this? 
Um, do people still want to hear from Tito? Do we want to change anything now? Um, so I think, yeah, we'll just do that in the next couple of weeks and then move on to the next six month clip and see what happens. But yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, I, I love the last round of, of answers. Um, I think it, just this idea of treating this as just something quick and dirty, but having it be backed fully by authenticity is something that I think I've learned a lot from in terms of um, what I can take from these weekly calls and put into my own work. And I love the fact, Tito, that you're, you're even just allowing this call to be recorded and shared with the community, kind of a behind the scenes, right? Because I do feel like, nice John, because I do feel like uh, there's so many people going off of Ross's comment, there's so many people with their own unique perspectives that um, they might not know how to exactly share that. And so we live in a world today where we have access to so many things in our pocket. You know, we have tools, most of them are free, that we can use these platforms as a way to share thoughts and ideas. And so um, maybe I'm hoping that someone in the Airminders community who's watching this, listening to this, will step, step up and go, you know what, maybe I should put something similar together. Maybe I should meet up with some other folks in the Airminders community to you know, talk about X topic or, you know, share out these ideas or put these resources together. Um, I think it, the more that we can be open and transparent in terms of the ups and downs and everything in between, as we are building out, as you all are building out this very new industry, um, the more that we can support one another, it's only going to be, it's, it's only going to add to more positive results. So um, I think this has been a fun experiment. I'm all about experiments. I mean, I see life as a big prototype anyway. So um, you don't have to kind of, you know, commit to five years, 200 plus newsletters right, at the, right off the bat. Experiment, have fun, listen to people, get a sense of what they want. And if you need to change it midway through, no one's going to notice as long as they hear from you directly, as long as you still keep that voice in whatever medium you decide to pick or change to. Um, but yeah, what what do you think? What what's going on in your world? You know, what's on your mind, and then how can that contribute to the larger conversation within the airminers community or any community? Yeah, um, I'm glad that Mark brought up prototyping and experimenting because I was just about to anyway. Um, I think you know, looking ahead and saying what do the next hundred or two hundred newsletters look like? There is absolutely no way that we would be able to answer that question. There's no way that we would have been able to look back at the beginning and say, this is what the next 200 newsletters will look like. There's no way. Um, and I don't, I think that that's something that stops people from starting is they think that they have to have a plan for how it's all going to, uh, how it's all going to go. And if you instead embrace the fact that you're experimenting, you might be able to plan the next five or 10. Um, but if you just say, I'm going to experiment with this for the next six months, and then I'm going to look at it in six months and evaluate, you're, it's just a more realistic way of doing things. We, it's just not possible to even plan more than that. And yeah, Mark just wrote small bets in the chat. We uh, ask you know, a question a lot of like, what's a uh, $500 experiment or a two week experiment or whatever um, amount or quantity is digestible for you. Uh, what can we do to make this, you know, something that people can respond to, react to, so that we can see from other people's point of view whether it's resonating or not, and then move from there. You know, I think that's the key is like embracing the uncertainty of you're not going to know what um, the result will be until you put the thing out there. So stop trying to plan in advance and just put the thing out there. Trust that you will then evaluate and either take a pivot and you know, move in another direction or keep going with what works. And it's just, you know, you can only see that first step ahead, ahead of you, right? You just take it one step at a time. Jeff? Yeah, I uh, thank you, Sarah and Mark, for four years of this. Like, we talk about unique voice, right? Like, this has been such an experiment in discovering my voice, right? It's like the idea that we're like, let's, let's Tito's voice, let's go put in a bottle and send it out to people. It's like, I'm just, I'm looking back through some of these first ones. I mean, so this, like the funny thing that's, that's embedded in this newsletter is that the first one was 
was it was an advertisement for buying planters made of carpet <laughs> like that's what this newsletter started as <laughs> was like 24 hours you have to fucking buy one of these things <laughs> and then and then like then they were for sale then they all sold out then they sold out and then around then was like hey what if we like this this person actually noga won a planter and wrote something really cool and we shared that and it was somebody else's voice and then and then like I gave Stuart Brand a planter. So it's still very like planter centric. Um, then this, this one was neat. I remember this, this was like, this is one day of your carbon emissions. It's 150 pounds of carbon dioxide that uh, I still have those tanks. Actually, if anybody is interested in some tanks of director captured carbon dioxide, they're in Sunnyvale. Uh, they weigh 150 pounds. <laughs> um, and just, it started to like, it started to grow into like, oh, hey, and this was not, this was not planned. It was, hey, let's, let's meet every week and just kind of see what happens. I think that's probably what was planned was let's do six months of a thing. I think it, it that's probably what the, the inception of it was. Um, but yeah, just looking back, it's like, it's, compl it's completely discovering your, your, your voice and, and, and helping that voice out. The idea that anybody like knows what their unique voice is, is like ad admirable, great. Um, and I would offer that, like, I sure as heck didn't, and just love discovering that voice with Sarah and Mark every, every week. And, and, and we can see what that voice looks like looking backwards. No idea what that voice looks like even, even next week. I was just at Ted countdown where Al Gore just got up and fucking yelled at everybody for a while. How grumpy, you know, it was just like kind of grumpy, but it was just like, I was like, well, shit. That's his voice at that moment. That's his voice. And look, next week, that could be my voice. I could be like yelling about something. Um, yeah. So really, really appreciate this opportunity to like discover this with both of you. Go Tito. Yeah. I want to bring up one last thing before I forget. I've been wanting to, to bring this up too. And Maybe this, the last comment, Tito, your, uh, that you shared is a good segue. Um, one thing that we also uh, run into every so often is that near the end of a call, especially if it's a really juicy topic, Tito feels very uncomfortable and very um, nervous. And that is actually something that we strive for, for him to feel that way, because we know we're onto something. And he has embraced that so much that he actually demands it. Um, but I feel like maybe early on, maybe the first year or so, Tito, in, doing all these newsletters, that wasn't really the case because I think you're still trying to figure out what this thing looks like and who's it for and all that. So to go back to those who are maybe interested in starting something, whether it's a newsletter, blog, podcast, YouTube, TikTok, whatever, um, don't be so like, concern about finding that voice and finding your lane early on, just experiment. And then eventually you will find your voice in your lane. And even when you have opportunities that feels uncomfortable because you're getting out of that lane, I think if anything, that's an opportunity for you to explore different lanes that you might not have explored at all. And so striving for the uncomfortableness, I think that actually is telling you that you're onto something and you're sharing something with the world that might not land well or it might you might hit it out of the park you never know but unless you push yourself if you just keep it inside and you don't hit send or publish or post or you know whatever then the world's not going to know what you think and you know you might not uh it might not inspire someone else or you know it might not do the thing you wanted to so embrace the uncomfortableness i think is also key to this because it is you are putting yourself out there and tito's doing it every single week i mean that's commendable um, yeah, it's scary and it's uncomfortable. Very scary. Yeah. And yeah, I think the ability to feel that discomfort and hit the send button anyway is going to increase the chances that what you're saying is unique. And, uh, you know, there's maybe somebody else wanted to say the same thing, but it was too uncomfortable for them. And they decided not to, you know? So if it's making you uncomfortable, it's probably something that hasn't been said before in some way. And that will help uh, make sure that you're sharing unique content that probably needs to be said. What's uncomfortable about me sending this thing today? 
<laughs> you tell me. So I think it's I think it's that uh, all the guests were men and all the guests were white. And when I talk about like amplifying voices and bringing in new voices, um, there's something that's not comfortable there. Um, I also think about like committing to, so I commit to five voices in air minors by the end of 2023. And like what's uncomfortable is like, okay, what does that, what do you commit to voices? Like, what does that mean? Um, I mean, if you really go there, like I am a huge advocate for like not going alone on this process. There's like, there's no way that it would be the same without the two of you. Like it's just completely incredible. Um, and so then I think about like how to help people form those things. And like, what if, to start with, what if, like, what if there were, there was funding for five people to uh, have a six month thing to meet with somebody every week for six months, what would that cost? Let's say it costs 200 bucks a week. So 200 times, how many, four times six. So for every, so that's 25, so it's $4,800 times five people, $24,000. I guess I go to money with it. Money's on my mind. Um, no, that's a really and, interesting way to contain it and put it in a, an experiment that's tangible. It's July. I commit to raising $24,000 for five people in air miners to have a six month newsletter, TikTok, whatever medium it takes. Um, I would, awesome. I would treat it as a, as kind of like a, a, a I'm trying to think of the actual adjective, but like a newsletter in residence program. Yeah. I was thinking residence or scholarship yeah. or grant or. Yeah. You know, I don't want, yeah. I don't want to say, con I don't want to say content producer in residence, but something along those lines. Right. I like that. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I feel like that would be great. And I think tying back to your previous comment too, like who are those voices that you don't really hear from in the community Yep, and try to find them and reach out to them and say, Hey, you know, if this opportunity was presented to you, would you be down to yep. try this experiment out? Right. And I think again, going back to your previous comment, Tito, yeah, the fact that, you know, all of us were, you know, all of us on this call looked a certain way. Um, just, just acknowledging that I think is, is great. Um, I think if anything, it just should make, you and the rest of the air miners community try harder to try to find different voices from different backgrounds to bring into the larger conversation and to invite to invite them to these opportunities too. So uh, I think acknowledging it is enough. And then how do you actually change it after this airs, right? How do you actually do the thing you have to do in order for this to not happen again? Because now if this is going to be published, you called yourself out the world here heard you you can't you can't keep doing this <laughs> so yeah. that should make you feel uncomfortable right that's it so, yeah it's like <laughs> <laughs> i love the way your brain works though tito like you've made an actual project out of it instead of just being like oh i wish that this were different yeah yeah so oh. mark to your point like yeah we need five we need people to i mean it can be as simple as just saying like i'm interested doesn't have to be like send a proposal or something just like reply to this and say i'm interested um, i'll put it in the email too so you don't have to listen to the fucking the whole thing to get to this point <laughs> but uh yeah that's that's what's needed we need to we need i need some people to to say they're interested in something like this and uh, i commit that i'll i'll figure out funding for it um so that you can have the the team part of it because that's the that's you have your voice and the rest of it, we can we can help find people to support you. And I loved how we landed on this, you know, the, the top of the hour, an hour yeah. into this, right? <laughs> and 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 to Grant, go back to some of your previous questions, like, and that's just sometimes how it is, right? Like we spend the first majority of our time together on Zoom, just talking very high level, and eventually starting to kind of zoom down, zoom in to something that's uh, more tangible and maybe the big takeaway from this hour recording is this six month residency program because ah. Tito just opened up and invited everyone on zoom and had the grid view open and realized holy shit we all look the same 
And so maybe there's something there. So if we had extra, you know, 20 or so minutes, I'm sure the three of us can knock out a newsletter and kind of dive deeper into that, but we won't maybe save that for next week. But, um, but yeah, I think this is just how it is. Sometimes we get to the topic early on. Sometimes it takes a while, you know, last minute or even beyond the 45 minutes. But well, um, I think this is totally the newsletter, right? I mean, mm -hmm. the rest of this yeah, is like, yeah. you know, about kind of for reference for somebody who wants more input. What's the subject line? Mm. More voices in carbon removal. Okay. Different like voices. That. Different yeah. voices. voices. Okay. Diverse voices. Diverse voices. Different voices. Start your own newsletter. I'm pretty sure we sent one. Like that. Start your own newsletter. Uh, more voices in carbon removal. Grant, you have any? Um, we do uh, shitty first drafts on topics. So you just like, you Go say it time. and I'll type it. And then there you go. Yeah, it's something about fostering extra co connections, um, having more discussions, building community through communication. Ooh, building community through communication. Good one. Uh, Less shame, more fame. Less Ooh. shame, more fame, baby. That's cool. That's like I'm, I'm thinking about like if we were just like mind melding with like. I mean, there's there's like five people that are going to read like maybe there's 20 people that are going to read this and it's like what in the subject line would just like tap the person that's just like oh like i want to share but i can't or I'm duh, 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 duh. like yeah that's what i was gonna say like we need this. to get into the height get into the head of that person like are they thinking i want to do this already but they're just scared or are we giving them the idea in the first place I mean, totally, we can make this like the next newsletter too. Just, I mean, this isn't a recording, so we can like focus more on it. So we could, we could introduce, introduce some questions like, hey, people, are you interested in doing this? Are you scared? I realize we're over time, like for sure. Um, like we're four minutes over time. Um, so like people want to hear what you have to say, like make it like maybe someone has okay. this curiosity, but they, then they need affirmation or something for validation. For yeah, it. totally. Because that's the other flip thing is like, you know, the 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 sense that you think people want to hear what you say is like the people we most want to hear from this we go through this in launchpad all the time the people that think about themselves as founders i mean you're already selecting for mostly men and mostly white guys like it's just people throw around the word and it's just like yeah you're just big so so that's why in, in boot up we start with just like oh it's like you're you're you want to take action on carbon removal that's it like that's that's all it's required to be to become a what we call a founder um and so to like, yeah, to, to, to down select by saying like, you know, do you have a voice that needs to be shared? Like, I think that's already selecting for people that like, I don't know, it's people that don't like want to share stuff. And like the, really the voices we want are like, how terrified are, would you be to write your own weekly newsletter and send it out to 2,500 people? And the people that are most is like, that's the people that we, that, that we want in this established program. <laughs> Maybe that's the subject line. How terrified would you be to send a newsletter <laughs> <laughs> to like that. that's that's cool. Yeah. That's cool, your, right? Um, yeah. I have this uh visual in my head of and I don't know if this is part of the newsletter or not, but like, you know, there's an open, empty mic on stage that's turned on. Who wants it? Like it's just it's just there on stage and Sure, you can have people that like, oh yeah, awesome, open like, yeah, let me take advantage of it. And then you have folks who might be a little bit afraid of that. You know, public speaking is what humans number one fear. Um, so there's something around like creating that condition for folks to feel comfortable enough to share on that mic. Yep. And prioritizing folks who, yeah, maybe I don't want to say those in the back because that's maybe a little bit negative, but those who might not always be given the opportunity to share or those who want to share, but they don't have a lot enough voice to be heard over the crowd. So, yeah. Well, we get to discover what that is together. Um, and what's the name of this thing? Air Miners voice program. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. This is a fun, fun idea. Um, something, something, something community residence. and communication might, might work really well. Communicator and residents. Indicator sounds so stuffy though. Like, no. Airminer in residence. I mean, shit. Like, 
is yeah. this anything but what being an air miner is, right? Doing yeah. the thing and then like sharing with the other people that are doing the thing and getting more it's people like on board. I mean, Grant, you're great at that, right? Like you're just so enthralling to listen to when you're talking about techno-economic assessment or you come to, to Launchpad, right? It's like, you mm -hmm. like this, you care about it, you are into it. What's there to communicate, you know? Air miner in residence. I like that. I mean, because shit, like, if you like, what are we going to help you do? Remove more carbon? You're already doing that, right? Like, what we what we really can move the needle on is you are doing this. Like, you're doing share this. Share your experience. We want you to, to share it as part of that as part of that creation, right? We don't have the benefit of teachers where there's some sort of baton that gets handed off, right? Like, nobody knows how to remove billions of tons of carbon. We get to discover it together. And, and sharing is a huge piece of that. It's sharing so is fundamental. Powerful. So powerful. Air miner and residence. acronym for air miners and residences. A ah! uh, is air. So that's kind of cool too. Whoa! Get out. Air program. That's amazing. You're on the <laughs> air. air. Residence, air miners and residence and residence. You're on the air. On the air. Oh, and you're on the air. Air miners <laughs> on the air. Yeah. Like, cool. Awesome. Ow. Boom. There you go. So again, like it's in terms of backstory, this is a lot of like how the newsletters work is we talk. So we sort of talk about something like, oh, let's talk about this topic. And then we end up sort of through this process, moving from talking about the topic to being in it. And that's where, that's where the part of being uncomfortable is. It's, it's hard to be uncomfortable talking about something. Like you very quickly just get pulled into it. Um, so, okay, air. And what was the subject line? I, I liked how terrified would you be to send a newsletter to 2,500 people? Mm -hmm. um, it's really cool. Great. It's different. Great. It grabs your attention. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's cool. Well, I'm going to hit stop recording. Bye, everybody. And, okay, bye. Well, yeah, bye. <laughs> yep, that's how we end. Later. Okay, I'm actually going to close it when we do this, which is, okay. that's how it works. Okay. Bye. All bye, right. Grant. It's been See lovely. You, Sarah. Thank Later. you. Bye. Bye. Yeah.